This is just a quick video to show you how to create an advanced output mapping file based on a raster image or a screen template. So ideally you'll have a PNG or some sort of image of the screen layout, something like this. We're going to use four screens here. So generally I'll start in the very top corner and it'll show you each of the columns and all the panels separately. So these are 100 by 100 pixel panels laid out in a 200 pixel by 600 pixel column. So two panels wide by six panels high. They can be spread out differently on stage, but that's the file we're going to work with today. We're going to start out by creating a new composition. Make sure the composition matches the resolution of the raster file and the resolution of your screen. So 1920 by 1080, we're working with a standard HD setup here. So where we're going to start is in the advanced output, so under output advanced. This is the window we're going to do all your mapping. So let's start off by creating a new, and right now I've got it set to virtual, so I'll set it to my actual display, which is display three. Uh, it's a 1920 by 1080 output. And we're gonna start in the output transformation section. So over here is our output guide. So this is where we're gonna load our file. Straight in. And you'll see, sits here in the background highlighted. So make sure that your PNG is a 1920 by 1080. It does need to match what your output is. If they're in a different scale or format, it won't line up properly, so you may need to adjust that. But this one's been set up correctly. So the first slice we're gonna create, it currently takes a full image and outputs the full sampled image, and we wanna adjust that just to match the first column here. So we already know the dimensions. Uh, it's 200 pixels by 600 pixels high. And we know where this column starts. It starts at zero, zero. So zero from the left and zero from the top. You can use the X, Y as well, but that starts from the center of the space. So we know the top corner is zero, zero. So we'll name this column one. And switch over to the input selection. So right now it's taking the full input. So if we go to match output shape, It'll match the selection to the output shape. So that's that same column. We'll drop that in the center there, just so it gives us a clear reference point. And load a clip. So back in the advanced Apple page, you can see it's sampling this area of the clip, just the center there, and then outputting it through the output window onto that page. So this is our full screen output. You can see it's showing up in that top corner like it is in the output preview. And you notice that the output guide doesn't show up in the actual output. So you can leave that there as a reference. So create the other feature, just a copy and paste because they're all going to be the same shape and just adjust the left pixels plus 200 each time to move it across. So 200, 400, and 600 for each of those. So they all line up nicely with their columns, and we'll just, they've all got a nice name now. Right now, they've all got the same input selection, so they're all taking it from the center. So they're all showing the same thing. They're all sampling that central area, so you'll see they're all the same input, but the output sam moving it across all those columns. This is a very quick, easy way to get the same thing across all those spaces. Let's just take that out for now. So we go, we match output shape again. And we can actually scale all of these together. So holding shift and dragging like most other applications, We'll keep ratio the same, but drag the scale, so I'll scale out. So now I've got the same image spread across all four screens. This could be any layout on stage, there could be a gap in between these screens, but it's a nice way of getting that image across all the surfaces. Alternatively, you might want a different input style, so you might want to spread these out and have a bit of a gap to match what's on stage or how the LED panels are laid out on the stage. Again, it's still sampling the input, and as you'll notice, it's now sampling a different area of that.
I'm just going to turn these off now and show you. You may not have the actual dimensions of the pixels. You may just have an image or you may have to do it manually. So you can do this the same way, just dragging the shape to the area. So you drag that slice to sample the area of the output. So you may have to do this if you don't have a raster image, you need to do it live or even to tweak once you get access to the actual screens. You'll need to do this live to screen and find where those pixels start and end. Another way to do this is we actually output that raster file straight to screen. So we've dropped it on a layer and output it. So because it is 1920 file, it is outputting at the same scale. But we could output this straight to the screens. And this is the reason you have different colored panels and the boxes for each panel are actually a different shade. So you can see if your pixels are bleeding into the next one. So you'll see that the output's still underneath there. But if you had a live to screen, you'd be able to see this actually crossing over to the next column of LEDs. So this is a good way to check that your mapping file does line up with what is on site. And now see we're just going to make sure we save this file. So save as and we give it a name. So we'll just call this map demo. So Resolume Save and Close does save it in the current composition and it is a way to keep going backwards and forwards, but it is a good idea to make sure you save it properly as a template. This means it's easy to recall into other compositions and also if you do need to share the mapping file or move to another machine, you can easily export it as an XML file into other Resolume setups.